and reach for greater. Join us every Sunday at 8 a.m. for a greater worship experience with Pastor Lavelle McMichael Sr. Join us after worship service on Sunday for an overflow of God's Spirit in Sunday school with our ministerial staff. Are you in need of prayer? The Greater Prayer Line is open just for you every Monday at 6 p.m. Dial in on our Zoom line for a one-of-a-kind prayer experience. Do you have a passion for singing? Join us in the sanctuary every Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. for choir rehearsal. We encourage all ages to come out and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. 
Don't miss out on Wisdom Wednesday Bible Study. Join us in the sanctuary at 12 p.m. with Minister Myers and Minister Robbins, delivering a powerful hour of teaching. Meet us back here at 7 p.m. for another powerful encounter with the Lord and our ministerial staff. Greater goes to Columbia July 15 through the 16th. All seats on the bus have been filled. We are so excited to take ministry on the road. Are you interested in traveling to South Africa? Please register today online. For more information regarding Greater's upcoming events, please connect with us on all social media platforms or join us on Remind to Stay Connected. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We're live at the sanctuary and we're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. To hear direction from the Lord. And we're excited about all of the announcements that are scrolling through the screen and that, that, that have been delivered by our artificial intelligence. So please make sure that you govern yourselves accordingly. There's a lot going on, but it is to keep us recharged. These things are not to make us uh, we're weary and well-doing, but it allows us to get what we need to do what the Lord has called us to do. So while we're on the South Africa slide, I do want you to know that uh, prices may increase after June 30th. So if you want to go on the trip and you want to reserve your spot, it will take $50 plus the cost of insurance to reserve your slot. You can either choose to pay monthly or you can pay as you go but you have to pay the insurance up front. That allows you to get your money back in the event of anything that happens um, up to a day before the trip, up to 75% of your trip. So the, I believe the insurance is $288 and then the sign up fee is $50 so that you can go to South Africa and then you have uh, more than 15 months to pay the balance off the balance. Uh, the, the cost includes airfare, hotel, breakfast, dinner, ground transportation, and all of your admission into the safari and into all of the museums that we will visit while we're there. So we're really excited to take a trip to South Africa in 2024 going into 2025. We're in 2023 right now, so do not look, uh, it's, it seems far away, but it's really right around the corner. Uh, the way the days, aren't the days and the months going by so fast? Amen. And so we're just grateful for the South Africa opportunity. I also just want to remind everyone that we have been in prayer and spiritual impartation. So we're excited about the opportunity to be live in the sanctuary tonight so that the Lord can continue to speak to us. So we're really, we're going to go straight into the word of the Lord tonight. We were able to hear uh, Brother Alfred and we see Summer Mills. Yeah, let's keep it going. Summer Mills on Monday through Thursday in the parking lot at 1230. So if you know anyone in the neighborhood, we want you to come out. And then also at Oak Grove, they're having a family conference September 5th through the 7th. So please govern yourselves accordingly. They're right around the corner on Green Drive. Are there any other announcements? We'll just go straight through them. That's it, good. So let's go into the word of the Lord. I believe we were in Romans 6 on, on Sunday and Brother Alfred, talked about not letting the past hold us hostage. And the reason why we are moving so fast and we're moving so swift is because we refuse to let the past hold us hostage. If you, if you give your past an opportunity, it will have a conversation with you. And here at the Greater New Hope Baptist Church, we are not giving the past an opportunity to take a seat on the bus. Amen. <laughs> in fact, this bus ain't even making a stop <laughs> down past lane. If you are a resemblance of the past, you have no seats on the bus. Uh, you have no seats in the sanctuary. You have no seats in the office and in the seat of our hearts. So I'm just letting everybody know that the um, Brother Alfred, Reverend, excuse me, Reverend Clements, he taught so in here on Sunday until I realized that the past, I am forgetting those things which are behind me and I am reaching for those things which are before I press. Somebody say I press. I Amen. We have a sanctuary crowd tonight. And those of you who are watching by way of the broadcast need to make it your business to stop viewing and do something about your situation. The only way you can do something about your situation is to allow yourself to get out of your comfort zone so that God can move in your life. 
And what you need to do is to make sure that all is well. Make, let's make sure that that door back. Praise the name of the Lord, because uh, we want people to be able to come into the sanctuary and they're coming in. Um, and so we're excited about the opportunity to make sure that uh, the people of God are able to come in. The Bible says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run in and are therefore safe. So we're really excited. If you'll just let them know that the door is open, they're right there on the side. And so we're going into Romans, the sixth chapter. I wanted to change the topic to say hostage a hostage situation. Somebody say a hostage situation. A, host a hostage situation is one in which a person takes control over another person and is demanding some type of action and not allowing the person to leave. So I don't know what our past has done to us, but it is holding us hostage. And can I just propose to us that sometimes our past is not a person, that sometimes our past is situational, that sometimes our past is something, it's thoughts, it's desires that like lock us in to a place where it does not allow us to move forward. Uh, we can look at the children of Israel. They were in a hostage situation. The Bible tells us that they were in front of the Red Sea and Pharaoh and, their har Pharaoh and his army was behind them and they were stuck in the middle with nowhere to go. Somebody say hostage situation. Uh, in, in my study, Reverend Clements, I found out that there are some stages to a hostage situation. Number one, there is isolation and negotiation with the hostage taker that there is isolation. So, so many of us have been isolated by our sin. We have been isolated from our, our destiny. We have been isolated from our loved ones. And we are in, in negotiations. Many of you who have received Christ as your Savior are now in negotiations to say, I'm going to go to church tonight. There are many people that are online that negotiated with your mindset that you would stay home. Now, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing. What I'm saying is that you're always in a hostage situation, and what you choose is going to be what takes you to the next phase of your life. That you cannot ask God for something and then not make him your choice. That if I'm asking God for healing, deliverance, salvation, restoration, family reunification, what are some things we're asking God for? Houses, cars, uh, a right mind. We're, we're, we're asking God to do things in our church, in our community, but we then have to take our prayer to the next level and then choose God. The question I would propose to you in, in, in looking at this text is, are you choosing God or are you choosing the hostage taker? Uh, are you choosing your attitude over being nice? Are you choosing to, to do something else with your money or you're choosing to be a giver? Are you choosing to, to give joy or are you causing sorrow? So, so there's always this, Paul says it like this in Romans 7, and I don't have a lot of time to go to it tonight, but he says there's always this constant warring in my members, that when I would do good, I don't do good because evil is always present. That there is always a hostage situation when it comes to believers. That we we will choose God, we will join churches, we will uh, join uh, the, the salvation army of the Lord, but then the enemy will enter into the camp to discourage us and cause us to choose everything but God. Number two, uh, contain and demand a surrender. That, that we are in a position that after we are isolated and there is a negotiation that goes on, that we are in a place where we are contained and we are demanded by the hostage taker to, be, so, to surrender to it. So, so, for example, when you surrender to... Uh, what do we surrender to? Uh, eating too much. I'm glad you said it, right? It's, it's like you could, you, could, you could just have the one plate, but it's almost like in the, in the contained situation, the demand of what you see that is good, that may not be good for you, wins out. 
because that's what we choose. It, it could be uh, financial decisions. It could be to uh, save money into our retirement account or get it right away. Oh, I got one, taxes. A lot of times we like to get that tax money up front but then we don't, and so we don't get no tax. Then when it's time for us to owe the IRS, or y'all don't want me to talk good tonight. Uh, then then we then we look at like why do I owe some money? But but we claim four and five exemptions so that they would take less taxes out, only to not get a refund and owe some money. All right, you understand? So there's a demand for surrender that the sin nature of us demands us to surrender to sin. Uh, it demands us to surrender. That's why the Bible tells us. If we go to Romans, the sixth chapter, and we're right here in this vein, and verse number four says, therefore, we are buried with him through baptism into death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. That when we get out of this hostage situation, we are choosing God and not the death of sin. This is why it's important for you to like and share this post, because many people that are watching by way of the broadcast are in betwixt and in between. Many of you that are sitting here are in a struggle for your life, which which means that you have to make some decisions. And the enemy knows that if he can use discouragement against you, that you'll make the wrong choice. This is why many Church individuals panic under pressure because they, they, they cannot deal with the anxiety that comes with the stress of life. So the enemy, he causes turmoil. He causes defeat. He causes discouragement so that the body of Christ who profess faith on Sunday will have failures on Monday. They'll have faults on Tuesday. They'll, they'll have fears on Wednesday. I know we were talking, God, if God be for me, who can be against me? I'm so glad I'm saved. But then Monday comes, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and we find ourselves wrestling with the fact that, yes, I love God, but I need money too. Yes, I love God, but I need love too. Too. Yes, I love God, but there are some things that I need worked out and, and so-and-so has what I need. And so we find ourselves uh, not necessarily dying to the things that we should die to. So what we do is we kill our joy, we kill our faith, we kill our belief in God, and then what resurrects is all of the things that are contrary to God's plan for our life. It's a, somebody say it's a hostage situation. Somebody type in the chat, it's a hostage situation. And then he says in verse 5, for if we be united together, watch this, in the likeness of his death, which means that uh, uh, the, the scripture says we are crucified with Christ, nevertheless we live. This death is not, says Jackie, it's not a physical death. It is a death to desires that are ungodly. So if we if we can come if we can unite, what does it mean to unite? It means to come together. It means to agree. If we can come together in the likeness of his death, certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection, which means that if I agree to dying to my flesh, then when I am a new creation, then my choices are different. My thought process are different. This is why Monday night, we have more people here on Monday night than we do tonight because the thought process is different from prayer and spiritual impartation than Bible study, which means that we have to get to a place where we, where we get to the hunger and thirst for righteousness, that the likeness and the unity of God comes to a hunger and thirst of righteousness for the Bible declares they that hunger and thirst after righteousness shall be filled. Thank you, Mother Wellington. We are going to be filled. Watch this. Verse number six says, knowing this, that the old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin, I've been talking about sin tonight, might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. You know, it's so funny to me. Because as, as a people, we always say, you ain't going to tell me what to do. Uh, you know, I'm grown. I'm grown. And we say, we, we, we'll say the whole phrase, I'm grown and I ain't going to even go there. But y'all know what I'm saying. 
I'm a grown man. I'm a grown woman. Because because we want people to know that we can make the choices we want to make. We can make the decisions that we gonna make. And can't nobody check me. That's been my that's been sister Shanda, That's been my thing. I'm, I say what I say, and can't nobody check me. What you gonna say to me? Because when you when you make decisions, you have to be man or woman enough to take the consequences or the rewards. So what we see here is that we we don't want to be slaves to God, but we'll be slaves to everything else. We'll be slaves to a mortgage. I ain't even going to get nobody to raise their hand. We'll be slaves to a car note. I ain't going to even look at nobody. Let me look at the camera. Let me look at the, the people... <laughs> Let me look into your eyes out there. Uh, we, we're slaves to college tuition. We're slaves to our children's needs and basketball. We're slaves to all of these things that create debt for us. But then we're not a slave to tithing. We're not a slave to church attendance. We are slave. We listen. We'll make every basketball game. Come on here. We'll go to every cheer practice and we'll we'll do all of the stuff that we love to do, but then we will not come to graduation service. We'll, we'll, we'll stay out all night for concert tickets. We'll camp out in the, 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 the weather that is not conducive for us. We'll sit in the heat. We'll stand in the rain. We'll walk in the cold for the enemy. But then when it comes to God, it's too hot. It's too cold. I don't feel good. We went to work with a cold. We went to work with COVID. Come on, y'all better talk to me. We went to we went everywhere with a mask on, and then we won't come to church with a mask. Slaves to everything but God. Lord, help me tonight. Help me not to make. I don't want to live a life of excuses. I don't want to. I don't want to live a life of of of, of once was and could have been and should have been. I want to be right for God. Says he says that we we are no longer to be slaves for sin. That's why we have to be crucified with Christ. The crucifixion is symbolic of the things we need to die to. The crucifixion is symbolic of the things that we need to say no to. But it's easy. That's why Paul says in, in Romans seven. Somebody just referenced Romans seven. If you if we go right over. One chapter, because we in Romans 6 right now, 4 through 7. If you go right over to, to Romans 7, you see Paul having this struggle. He's like, man, I know. Listen, y'all, somebody watching me tonight said, I'm going to church tonight. I'm getting my tail up and going to church. And then what happens is something happens. And the enemy said, you ain't going. And then you start saying, well, you know, I was there Sunday. Well, I went Monday night. And he starts, do you get in the hostage situation? You're, you're negotiating your ransom. Lord, help me, Jesus. Brother Alfred, I don't think you know what you did. We're, 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 in, a, we're in a hostage situation. And if y'all ever, come on, y'all watch the hostage. Can we talk about this for a minute? A bank is under arrest. Hallelujah. The gunman has the gun to the, to the teller's head and says, put everything in the bag and still kills her. Do you know the enemy will get you to stay home and still kill you? Do you know the enemy will cause you not to tithe and you'll still lose your house? You know the enemy, he'll get everything out of you and he'll leave you with nothing. But I'm going to tell you something. When you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together. I choose God. I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Hallelujah. But I, the Bible says to fail not the assembling of myself. I'm not here because I feel like it. I'm not here because I want to. I'm here because his word says that he will cause us to come together in unity so that he can edify the body. I don't want to be a slave to stuff. In fact, our people shouldn't want to be a slave to nothing. We should want to be obedient to the word of God. David says it like this. Put in me obedience to your word. Verse number seven says, for we have died. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we die with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Not verse nine. Let me go a little bit further. Knowing that Christ, having been raised from the dead, dies no more. That when you die to your flesh and your stuff, once you die to it once, that's the only loss you have to take. 
that everything I was telling somebody yesterday or today, I don't remember that sometimes I was telling a young lady uh, in the gym this morning, the Lord gave me a word for her on May 22nd. It was the Monday of the revival and I got nervous and I said, I'm not going up to nobody in the gym. This is crazy. And, and the Lord, and, and the Lord has been dealing with me from May 22nd to what's the day, the 27th to 28th. And, and I, you know what I told God? I said, God, if she ever come back in here, do you know, I began to minister to, the, to that young lady. And I began to say that what the Lord told me to tell her that sometimes we'll, we'll be in hostage situations about not being used by God. We'll be in hostage situations where the enemy will make you feel like you won't be received. The enemy will make you feel like God, that, that people are going to reject you. But let me tell y'all that's in this room tonight. God is going to send you the people that will receive what you have to say. Don't you worry about being rejected. Don't you worry about what people said to you in the past. The people that are coming to your life right now are going to be better than those. The, oh, Lord, y'all don't want me to talk in here. Hallelujah. Those people that didn't believe in you before, that's not who God sent to you. God sent to you people that's going to love you for you, that's going to push you to greater, that's going to cause you to reach for more, and not going to let you settle for less. I don't know who I'm talking to in this room or on this line, but I'm so ready to be around people who are going to cause me to be like Jabez and say, Lord, I'm ready for you to enlarge my territory, increase my tents. I need more. I'm tired of settling, settling for less, and I no longer want to live in mediocrity, but expand. Somebody say, Lord, expand me. And we expand to uh, the, this situ situation, this hostage situation where they use tactical teams so that so that they can get the people out i need a spiritual tactical team hallelujah that know how to come to monday night prayer and have a spiritual impartation so that when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit will lift up a standard those people that will come to monday night prayer and sunday school and wednesday night bible study so when the bill collector come hallelujah you can say that he will make me the lender and not the borrower i need somebody that when trouble comes to your family and when the enemy try to snatch your children from you that there is a tactical team team that is trained hallelujah to know that no weapon formed against me is going to prosper and every tongue that rise against me shall be condemned where's my tactical team at where where are my internet hackers out there that know how to get a prayer through in their kitchen where are my internet hackers out there that know how to call on God in your car I know you couldn't make it tonight but you can still be a part of the tactical team hallelujah you can hook up over there and we can hook up in here and when the enemy thought he won hallelujah the God that we serve will cause the enemy to set ambushments against each other there is no weapon that God cannot conquer with the, the spirit of God that prayer cannot come and overcome I am persuaded that nothing shall separate us from the love of God I know we in a hostage situation but I choose the cross he was wounded for my transgressions Lord I feel like Sunday morning. He was bruised for my iniquities. The chastisement of my peace is upon him and by his stripes. Those of you in the hospital, hallelujah, Mother Pauline and Shannon Gray, I'm sending a tactical team to cause healing to come into your body. Those that are in the hospital, I'm sending a tactical team to go down the ICU unit and get past the nurse's station and bring healing to your room. Who am I talking to? You're stuck in a convalescent home a prison institution, a prison in your mind, you're a prisoner in your home, but my tactical team of prayer know how to come through the window at night and send peace like a river and cause it to attend it. Hallelujah. God is going to rescue you. When you trust the tactical team, then we're not going to let the past Hold us hostage. We're not going to let the enemy. The enemy has lost. Somebody ought to declare the enemy has lost. 
The enemy lost. Hallelujah. He lost with my children. He lost with my money. He lost with my marriage. He lost with my church. He should have got us while he had the chance. He should have got me while I was down and discouraged. But the fact that I'm standing in this floor tonight, I want you to know I'm persuaded that I'm going forward. I'm not going to cry to God. I'm going forward. I'm not going to get stuck in between the Red Sea and with Pharaoh. I'm going forward. God is about to part my Red Sea. God is about to part my Jordan River. And I'm going over over on dry land and everything that tried to come up against me is about to drown in the sea God gave me spiritual lungs uh, so that I could absorb the water hallelujah and if I make my bed in hell Lord help me tonight behold thou art there I got spiritual gills tonight that is when the enemy comes in like a flood. Lord, help me. Hallelujah. I got a whale lungs. Hallelujah. I got, I got, I got dolphin gills huh, that can expand with the depths of the sea. That there is no water that is too deep that God can't cover me in. There is no water that's too low that God can't take me down deeper and say, I'm still going to cause you to come out. Hallelujah. I'm coming out with my hands up. I'm encouraged tonight. I don't care what hostage situation you in. God is ready to bring you out. But I'm going to say it like I said to the prisoner. But do you have the mindset to stay free? I don't care how long you've been in bondage. And I don't care how long you've been a hostage. If you survived it, then God can bring you through it. If, you, if you're still alive, I you might be depressed watching me tonight. You might be oppressed. You might be in betwixt and in between. You might not have direction. You might feel lost. But the fact that you're listening to this broadcast lets me know that God can re walk and not faint. We thank God for the uh, Reverend Clemens did an awesome job. He, he talked about us surrendering. He talked about he talked about that surrender. He talked about, I believe it was sanctification. Hallelujah. How, you know, and we got to surrender. We got to surrender ourselves to God. And then we have to sanctify ourselves. And you know what that sanctification going to take It's going to take a sacrifice. This what we are going through right now is going to take a sacrifice. It takes when you get off work to come to church, it's a sacrifice. When you when you've had a long day and a long night, it takes a sacrifice. When you when you have bills to pay and you give an offering, it takes a sacrifice. When you when you've loved people and you haven't felt love back, it takes a sacrifice. But we are not going to allow the sacrifice to hold us back. So I'm just encouraging those of you that are watching, those of you that are here, that this is the the, the tactical team has come and while the enemy I watched um, Money Heist. I watched Money Heist on Netflix, and I watched how they had all those people hostage. I watched how they had all those people in there. And you know, if you hit in a hostage situation too long, it's too many casualties. And we need God to get us out quick. Some of you have been in your situation too long. But tonight, but tonight, I am praying that God would bring you out. That while the enemy gets tired, God will renew your strength. That God will cause you to be able to move swiftly and to be able to maneuver against the wiles and the plot and plan of the enemy. I'm praying right now for all of you that are here in this sanctuary. I'm praying for those of you that are watching online. It's going to be all right. God is not going to leave you by yourself. Just hold on. Hold on. Help is here. Help is, help is here right now. And I pray for you. As you, you, you don't even really need to type your prayer request. If you would just uh, say to the Lord, hear my cry and attend unto my prayer. When my heart gets overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. We learned in here on Monday that we may not be able to open our mouths, but we can clap our hands. We may not be able, hallelujah, we may not be able to clap our hands, but we can lift our hands. Hallelujah. We learned that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I wish I had somebody in here tonight, hallelujah, that know how to pull on God, that understands the sound of prayer. Oh God, we thank you. We come back tonight to pray for your people. We come back tonight to stand between the porch and the altar. Your people have been held hostage. The enemy has tried to distract us. The enemy has made us feel like we're not gonna make it. But tonight we yield, we surrender. We surrender our will to your will. We surrender our thoughts to your thoughts. Hallelujah, we come back tonight to say yes, Lord. Yes to your will, yes to your way. God, those in this sanctuary tonight, I ask that you would give them a special anointing, that you would give them a special anointing that would come over the crown, from the crown of the head down to the soles of their feet. God, for their coming tonight, I ask that you would stretch out on them. Hallelujah. Their faith has been stretched tonight. And I ask right now, God, that you would move special in their lives. Give them miracle signs and wonders, financial increase, raises and promotions. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Refunds and rebates. In the name of our God, healing to their body, healing to their minds, in the name of our Lord. God, they need strength tonight. And I thank you for giving them the strength that they need for the journey that's ahead. I bind the devil on every side. Say that the Lord rebuke you in the blood of Jesus against you. We stand in power tonight. We stand in the anointing of God. We know that God is too loving to be unkind and too wise to make a mistake. We stand in authority and we bind the devil. We settle the devil's dust. We overthrow the horse and the rider tonight, knowing that, God, you do nothing and you cannot fail. You do everything that you're supposed to do. Hallelujah. We thank you for being a God that cannot fail, and we give you glory. Touch our children tonight. Touch our grandchildren tonight. Touch our great-grandchildren tonight. Every generation of this church, every generation within this community, walk up and down Franklin and Meredith Street, Green and Martin Luther King Drive, University and Thistle and Thurlow. Hallelujah. Woodbury, hallelujah, Brentwood. God, go up and down the crevices of the streets. We bind the devil on every hand. Protect and keep your people. Dispatch angels to guard the highway while our children are driving in cars. Protect angels while they are in school or at camp. Protect angels while they're on the field or in the court. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we call on you tonight because we stand in the need of prayer. We call on you tonight uh, because we cannot make it without you and we don't want to live without you oh god move in our lives move in this church hallelujah move on this corner we claim every property that belongs to us uh, in the name of jesus uh, we claim every vacant lot and every house uh, that belongs to us uh, in the name of jesus uh, give us insight and foresight give us business knowledge uh, we thank you for giving us the money we need we thank you for sending grants, God. We thank you for we thank you for multi-million dollar donations uh, that don't have to be paid back. Uh, we thank you for buildings paid in full. Hallelujah. We thank you for trust funds uh, and foundations uh, that will take care of the seniors of this community, that will take care of the children of this community, that will help us to restore our mental health. Uh, where there is mental health walking around in this community, restore the people's minds in the name of Jesus. Uh, give us practitioners uh, in the name of the Lord uh, that are saved and sanctified. Uh, hallelujah. Doctors and nurses, uh, counselors, God, uh, that are credible and have credentials uh, in the name of Jesus uh, that we can help the people of God uh, have their right mind. Uh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we will be in good health, uh, that you will heal these bodies uh, of the ailments that come to destroy us, uh, that come to kill us high blood pressure sugar diabetes liver trouble, kidney trouble belly trouble, mind trouble back trouble, hip trouble knee trouble, oh God we thank you right now for healing these bodies, make us whole we want to be whole those who are sick and shut in touch Dr. A's body right now 
in the name of Jesus from the crown of her head to the soles of her very feet to strengthen her body right now in the name of Jesus touch Maddie Williams body in the name of God hallelujah how every joint every bone every muscle in the name of Jesus that digestive track oh God touch her right now hallelujah touch our mothers in Zion they have aches and pains arthritis bone trouble but God we thank you right now that you bring health to our navel and marrow to our bones God strengthen these bones in the name of Jesus oh God help us Lord not to endure the pain but to be pain free hallelujah help these toes and fingers hallelujah muscles and joints to move the way you commanded them to move in the name of Jesus those in the hospital I bind the spirit of a stroke I bind the spirit of an aneurysm in the name of Jesus I rebuke blood clots in the name of CTI yes God that you would dissolve them right now that you would be a Holy Ghost blood thinner in the name of Jesus the heart attack that's on the rise take down that blood pressure take down that stress in the name of Jesus oh God do it for your glory do it for your honor those who are dealing with their lungs that dealing with drug addiction that's dealing with alcohol addiction God whatever addiction they're dealing with I bind it in Jesus name help them to be free from the hostage situation help them to surrender and so they can be sanctified yes Lord yes Lord our answer is yes we say yes we say yes we give you glory oh God we give you honor open up doors for our children this year those who are graduating those who have graduated for scholarships for college offers for acceptance letters in the name of Jesus hallelujah as they fill out applications as they go through English courses give them the mind to be able to be good writers hallelujah give them the oratorical skills to be able to articulate what you desire for them to articulate in the name of Jesus and we thank you God our praise is our weapon tonight and we praise you even though we can't feel you we praise you even though we're still in trouble we praise you even though we don't know how we're going to get out. We praise you for the businesses that will be birthed through this ministry. We praise you right now, hallelujah, that you're causing, hallelujah, low interest loans to be approved in the name of Jesus. Uh, no interest loans uh, in the name of our God that we will be able to pay them back before interest accrues. Uh, hallelujah, God. Uh, do it right now. Uh, God, free these, for, forgive these student loans uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, we thank you on we praise you for it. God, your people desire to prosper. Your people desire to travel. Your people desire to build you a better house. Your people desire to provide holistic ministry. And so God, give us what to do. Help us to run into the right people. Help us to talk to the millionaires and billionaires. God, give them a heart for this ministry. Give us a heart to serve so that we can be where we're supposed to be. Give us a heart to vision and dream. Touch the ministers of these church, of this church church give them preaching power as they prepare their messages and as they stand before this sacred desk hallelujah God help them to flow like they did at home in the name of Jesus that as these preachers prepare that you will cause them to be hallelujah the Joshua generation hallelujah that as we send them out they can take over territory in the name of Jesus give them an intercessory prayer life hallelujah give them a hunger and thirst for righteousness. Touch the preachers of these church. Hallelujah. Touch our deacons. Give them vision. Pour fresh oil on them. Touch our deaconess. Help them to be wailing women. Hallelujah. That will cry out for the people of God. Touch our missionaries. Help them to meet the needs of your people. Touch our trustees as they take care of our church. Touch our virtual ministry. Those who are in charge. Give them insight and force 
insight. Help them to be spiritual producers, executive producers in the name of Jesus. Give them an eye for television. Give them an eye for the internet. Give them the, the witty ideas for social media in the name of Jesus. Our graphic design team, our administrative offices. Oh God, we thank you for what you've done in this house. We see what you're doing and it's marvelous in our eyes. We say yes, Lord. We want to give you what you want. We want to do what you tell us to do. We want to be obedient to you. We want to be obedient to your word. So we come together tonight to stretch out on faith. We come together tonight to stretch out on your love. Do it for your people. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Give us an Elijah anointing. Cause us to surpass all those that started before us. Give us an Elijah anointing. Let your rain fall down like dew drops. Yes, Lord. And we thank you and we praise you and we lift you and we honor you. Hallelujah. We say yes, Lord. We thank you so much. We say these prayers. And you're, we're not done praying. We're just going to quit. But we thank you for the, the spirit of prayer that is all over us right now. We thank you for your angels that's been dispatched. Hallelujah. To bring answers to us. Some answers you'll give us tonight. Some answers you'll give us tomorrow. But God, make the airway clean so that our angels can get to us. Hallelujah. Make the airway clean so that our angels that are assigned to us can get us our favor. Hallelujah. I see favor falling on the people of God. I see favor overtaking your life. I see favor overtaking your job. What they said they would never do. Hallelujah. They're about to do it. Uh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I thank you and I praise you in Jesus' name. One more time, clap your hands and open your mouth and just tell them thank you. The Lord is here tonight in this place. Oh, thank you, Jesus. We thank God tonight. Hallelujah. I'm just going to quit. Amen. But prayer is running through my veins. Hallelujah. I feel like God can do anything. I don't care what you're going through. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're on the verge of giving up. Don't you do it. Don't you throw in the towel. Everything is about to work out in your favor. I know it feels like you lost everything and everybody and that you by yourself, but don't you give up. The best is yet to come. And we believe God. We believe God. I'm so very grateful to the Lord to be in the sanctuary tonight. And for those of you who have joined me, I'm so grateful that you uh, have come. I will say that we are, this month is hurrying along. Amen. And before you know it, it's going to be July. Amen. But this Friday, um, actually tomorrow night, I believe, at, uh, um, at, at Cedar Grove, Cedar, or for Cedar Drive, is rehearsal for the Rowan Choir. And so I'm asking those of you who want to be a part of the choir, uh, Reverend Clements has that information, but if you want to be a part of the, the annual session choir, um, Reverend uh, Stephen Floyd will be uh, over that music ministry there. So we're asking you if you want to be a part tomorrow, I believe it's the first rehearsal for our annual session that will happen next month. So please um, take the time to go by rehearsal and, and lend your voices to our praise team, our choir, whoever wants to be a part of that. Maybe you haven't joined our choir, but you want to be a part of the Rowan Association Choir, please do so. And then on Friday night, Dr. A will be here with all of us to celebrate not only our graduates, but we are celebrating education. So if your young person has been promoted to any grade, we are going to celebrate them on Friday. And so we're asking those of you who have the link to make sure you fill it out completely so that they can have all of the information so that certificates can be completed. The virtual team is working on what will be displayed on the screen. So this Friday, is our education service. We've had this service, I believe, for the past five years. So we're asking those of you who have your regalia from whatever degrees you have, that if you would wear that on Friday, there is a processional that happens, and we like to display 
our regalia to those young persons and even some of the adults. There are some adults that are finishing education. And even if you got a certificate, maybe a CDL license or an HVAC, uh, whatever it is. I, last year, I graduated from chaplain school. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a degree. Amen. It is just a phase of advancement in your life. We want to celebrate that. Hallelujah. You might have you might have uh, grown up and, and, and been able to do something that you've never done before. Maybe you went scuba diving or or you did skydiving and you got a certificate or you went race car and in one first place, we want to celebrate you. Amen. We Any advancements you got, if you went zip lining for the first time and survived, we want to celebrate you. So we're really excited about all of the achievements of our house. And many times we don't realize that we've achieved as much as we have achieved because we, we sometimes overlook what we would consider small achievement too small for the Greater New Hope Baptist Church Education Department. And so we're excited about our graduates and those who have been promoted. So Dr. A and the entire church will be here on Friday. We'll only be here for an hour, hour and a half. So please join us Friday. Pastor, we've been in church all week. Good. It'll keep you out of trouble. Hallelujah. Come to church. We're excited about it. Amen. So please make sure you're here on time. If you're coming from work, just come straight here. This Sunday, I'm ministering here on Sunday. Sunday is July the 2nd. Amen. It's first Sunday. It's communion Sunday. So please come ready for communion. And we're really excited about what the Lord is doing and what God is doing for us. So please meet me here on Sunday. And then don't forget all of our announcements. The most important are if those of you who have uh, outstanding balances for South Carolina, just make sure you reconcile that and just see our finance ears, it's finance ears. Did I say that right? Financiers, not ears, financiers. <laughs> we want to make sure that you um, are able to make those payments. And, and listen, you don't have to avoid them. Just let them know where you are and what you need. And we will, we will make sure that you are able to get on the bus. So no worries there. We're excited to be taking um, a full bus to support, amen, the things that are happening in South Carolina with the National Deacons Convention. So we're really excited about this opportunity. This is the first time since I've been pastoring here that we have taken a bus trip together. So come on the bus with me, and we're really excited about it. So we will not have church here on Sunday uh, July the 16th. So the, the, the church doors will be closed, but they'll be open in South Carolina. All roads are leading to Columbia, South Carolina. So we're excited about that. Amen. More than 50 people are going and we're taking the praise team. We're taking musicians. We're taking ushers. We're taking everybody with us. The virtual team is setting up. It's just going to be a great day. So we're really excited about it. We're going to go shopping in South Carolina and we're going to go out to eat and we're going to have us a good time. We're going to play some games on the bus. I, me, and, me and Sister Shannon was trying to figure out uh, how we're going to play games on the bus. As long as they got a microphone, we're going to have us a time. And the wheels on the bus go round and round all through the town. Hallelujah. So we'll be getting you the on the bus newsletter is coming to you soon. Amen. So we're excited about all of the things that we're doing. Uh, we're going to get into July and all that's happening into July, in July, but we're going to just stick with June right now and let you know sun, uh, on Friday we'll be here one more time. Brother Serge, have I missed anything? If I missed anything, put it on the screen and I'll say it one more time. But if not, we're ready to go home. Uh, that's right. Tomorrow is the last day for this week where there will be meals. So if you know children in the area uh, and we need some volunteers that would like to come to the parking lot around 1230 to help us make sure that the young people are getting their meals. So if you want to uh, help us with volunteering Monday through Thursday, let Sister Shanna know and we'll give you instructions on what to do Monday through Thursday. But we want to make sure that we're supporting Guilford County School and we don't want them to take this benefit away from us because our children, whether you know it or not, the children in this neighborhood need to eat. And so we want to make sure that they take full advantage of it. I even thought about if we need to put a table outside so they can eat under the tree and we, we just got to figure it out. So we want to make sure that our young people have access to the food that the, the county is giving out. Amen. That's it. So we're going home. I pray that you have enjoyed our broadcast. Come to church, 906 Meredith Street, in person. You won't be disappointed. If you're enjoying the virtual ministry, then you definitely would enjoy the in-person ministry. So I'm compelling you to come. Come to church. 
come to church and be a part of our sanctuary service and we, you will not be disappointed. So I pray that you have a great day and we'll have even a greater week. God bless. Hi, my name is Cynthia Quick and thank you for watching The Greater Experience. Thank you for joining us today and we'll see you again next week at the same time. My name is Lou Jean Pearson. I'm a member of Greater New Hope Baptist Church. And I love my church. And I love my pastor. He's awesome.